Today, I'm going to be showing you some examples of how to use commutators on um, different types of puzzles. So, I really recommend you watch my original commutator video, which you can see on the screen somewhere. Um, that, I go into real detail about talking about what a commutator is and how you can make your own. But in this video, I'm just going to show you a bunch of examples of how commutators can apply to a bunch of different puzzles. And, um... Uh, now I'm going to bring up the commutator outline, which hopefully you remember from my last video, or the commutator video. So, um, as you can see, I'm, I'm gonna, I want to do a corner commutator, or just cycle three corners. And hopefully you already know this, but I'm just going to go over it again for those people who don't. So it's down, this is on a Rubik's Cube, down, down, up, up, bring this side down. Then down, down, up, up, then bring this side up, and we've cycled three corners. If you watched my commutator video, you'll probably already know how to do that. But um, now I'm going to show you uh, a bunch of different examples of how this same um, type of commutator you can see in the outline applies to many different puzzles. Face, corner, edge, corners, basically at every kind. So let's begin. Okay, my first example is going to be on a 4x4 cube. And um, if you didn't remember from my last video, remember commutators, they follow the pattern where you do move 1, which is x, and you can see on the screen, y, undo x, undo y, you find a side that only has one piece affected, move another piece in, and then undo the entire thing. Well, now I'm going to show you that same kind of concept on a 4x4. So, a really easy one that's similar to the... Um, corner commutator on the Rubik's Cube, at least sim similar in execution, is to hold it like this, and you can see in the commutator outline this algorithm, um, we bring this slice down, okay, so that's going to be x, and then y is going to be bringing the front down, front down, and then undo x, and undo y. Okay, and now we need to find a side that only has one piece affected. So let's see, we have this side here, this side here, and this side here. These two sides don't count since they have multiple pieces affected. And to keep it simple, I'm just going to use this side here. It only has one piece affected. And that's what we want. So now we need to move another piece into this piece's slot. Okay, so that means we bring this piece down. So now we've moved this piece here. And now we undo the entire commutator. So we undo the x and y, undo x, undo y. So we undo that whole thing. And that is like this. Or you can see it on the commutator outline. Like this. Down. Down. Up. Up. And then we need to undo the move we did to bring the edge into place. And boom, we've cycled three edges using a commutator for a 4 by 4 and take a couple minutes to maybe write that um, down, the commutator outline, because it's really helpful to know. But yeah, we've cycled three edges. And if you watch my setup move video, which I'll uh, also have on the screen, you know that you can apply this. If you have one algorithm that can cycle these, you can apply it in many different ways by sticking um, the edges you want to cycle into these edges slots. So let's move on to another puzzle. Now I'm going to be showing you the same kind of example, but on a covicopter, or a helicopter cube is the exact same thing, except these edges aren't exposed. But it's the same concept for making a commutator for it. So, um, this is a little bit different, because this is an edge turning puzzle. Only going to be cycling um, corners, which is better. Um, so, um, hopefully in my last video, you saw that the, or I'll tell you now, you saw that the x, y, undo x, undo y, that's short, but it's really um, it's it can really be as long as you want because the x or the y could represent multiple turns instead of just one. Okay, so let's try that here. We only want to cycle corners. How can we do that? Well, we can start the same way with down, down, but then we want to do it again. So up, up, similar to what we did on the Rubik's Cube, and now after we did that down, down, up, up, 
we can see that we do have a side affected with just one corner, this side. That means we, need can, we can replace it with a corner, like that. And now undo the moves we did, which um, is undoing X, and then Y, and then, you know, continuing. Down, down, up, up. And now we need to undo this move. And that's now cycle three corners. Similar to what we've done on the Rubik's Cube. It's really using the same kind of concept. And it's actually cycled the same three corners. Which is really cool. So let's move on to the next puzzle. So now I'm going to show you the same example on a corner or vo vertex turning puzzle. And that means it turns around the corner. Okay? The vertex. And this is a little bit more um, difficult, at least in a way, because we actually don't have corner pieces on this puzzle, unlike Rubik's Cube or the Kovic Copter, which we do. Um, there's actually nothing in the corner, or at least nothing visible. So how can we um, do a commutator that helps? Well, I'm not going to have the commutator outline on this one because it's really simple how to do this one. Um, basically, we want to use these two sides as our sides we're turning. Then we want to do up as our x, then up as our y, then undo x, then undo y, and well, we've done a little bit, we've done this. And that's really the best you can do, I mean, at least to my knowledge, on the x cube, and to solve it, you basically need to keep repeating that in a way. Um, but that's a good way, see, we, we did down, or up, up, down, down, to only affect a certain number of pieces. So let's move on to the next and final okay. puzzle. The final puzzle I'm going to show a um, example on here is going to be the face taunting octahedron. And this is a little bit more difficult, but uh, I think you'll still get through it. So um, basically, this is similar to a Rubik's Cube um, because it's face taunting, as the name suggests. It taunts on the face. But instead of a cube that has six sides, this has eight. But that's kind of irrelevant to what we're doing here. And um, so we're going to do the same, same type of thing. We're going to do a down. So we're going to hold it like this with one of the corners facing towards us. And we're going to do a down, down, up, up. And let's look for one piece affected. Um, doesn't look like it. We don't have one piece affected anywhere. Um, but we do have two pieces affected, so that can work. We have two pieces affected here. So now we want to move another piece into this piece's slot, or both these pieces' slots, I guess. So move that in. And then I'm going to continue undoing. So I'm going to undo X, Y, and then so on. So, and then I bring the right down, left down, right up left up and then finally I need to undo this move and um, I look over here and I've cycled three corners plus um, two centers plus two centers are swapped and that um, swapping two centers is actually a pretty valuable thing to know and also all um, cycling three corners so this is a pretty good um, move to know if you have this puzzle because it cycles three corners um, in the back on, and they're all in one face, which is good, and it also swaps two centers. So now I'm just going to do a real, really quick recap of the stuff we were doing. So to recap, um, we did the basic commutator outline, as you can see on the screen, is down, down, up, up, as I like to remember it, because you're usually just going like this, okay? Or if you want to be specific, you could go whatever your x y, undo x, undo y, ah. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's a commutator. That's a bunch of examples of how, when, you would want to use a commutator. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more types of videos like this, like the video. And, bye.